Hey everyone, it's Sensi Victoria Whitfield here, your journey partner in business, welcoming you back to episode 121 of the Journeypreneur podcast. This is your source for channel holistic stress management techniques, guidance, inspiration, and motivation to stay on your path to rapid financial ascension and massive impact as a conscious entrepreneur. So the title of this podcast episode is Six Stages of Energy Transformation. And I want to share with you something that needs to be repeated. I am not a coach. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Um, And But at the same time, I do teach a lot, right? I I give a lot of advice. I give a lot of consulting. Absolutely. But I am not a coach, right? I am an energy healer. The bulk of my training and the bulk of my work um, in traditional education was to be an educator, right? I went to school at Rutgers University and, you know, got TEFL certification and trained like all the like 60 plus tutors and all this stuff. Like I've had education education, (laughs) Um, like a certain amount of education, education, Um, especially around teaching English and getting people to express themselves. So, but my non-traditional education, which has gone on past um, graduating from college, has been in Reiki, energy healing. I'm a Reiki master four times and counting now. Um, this is something that I study privately um, with different Reiki masters from different traditions. This is something I'm deeply passionate about, energy healing. I will continue to study that for the rest of my life. I do not study Reiki for anything other than really for me. And uh, that's my real identity. Yes, I uh, the word sensei, which is my title, means teacher, right? So that is part of my identity. But when I identify myself, it's usually as a healer. I am not a coach. And with that being said, as an energy healer, there are certain things that I've observed. Now I'm entering my 10th year um, full time as a professional energy healer. Uh, there are certain things that I've observed around people's energy that after you've, you know, worked with people online and offline, like I have right in person or over the phone or over uh, Skype or or Zoom or other things like I have, if you've um, worked with people, not just locally, but also all over your state, all over your country and in different countries in the world, um, like I have after you've trained people how to do energy work <laughs> multiple times, right? Uh, like I have, you start to see patterns in the energy. You just get exposed to so many different situations and people that you can't help but start to see the patterns. And one of the patterns that I've observed now in the last decade of doing this work is that there are six stages of energy transformation, right? Or when I talk to people one-on-one, when they book in a call with me for like a breakthrough call, we go through what stage of block (laughs) are they working through? And we cover all six of these stages. So whether you're working on your own energy in solitary, you know, your own solitary practice, or if you want to jump on a call with me, you want to follow along and understand what I'm talking about and working through with you, or if you want to jump in one of my programs, this, these six stages of energy transformation are something that is woven very deeply into the transformational work that I do for conscious entrepreneurs. Um, balancing and clearing their energy to keep it there in mind, body, and business. That's my role as your journey partner. I give you space to be visionary. And I want to show you, and you know, kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, lift the curtain and welcome you behind the curtain a little bit to see, okay, well, how does some of this work, right? And with that being said, I also teach the six stages of energy transformation in my Entrepreneur Master Manifestors Facebook group. We do challenges. We're actually in the middle of one right now today. Um, today was day two. And so I did the training on the second stage of energy transformation transformation uh, called storytelling. And I'm going to get into this um, in today's podcast episode. 
But I want to break it down for you so you have it all in one, right? And you may be you may be in that Entrepreneur Master Manifestors Facebook group right now in the middle of our challenge going on right now. And awesome, if you happen to find this podcast, congratulations, you found an Easter egg that puts you ahead of the game of everybody, <laughs> right? So you're welcome to, of course, there's nothing like being live, right, with me and the rest of the tribe going through this work. But this is also really to support those of you who are doing the work, um, right, working through the, the workbooks that I've created and, and all the different things to make sure that your energy is grounded and clear, right, in mind, body, and business. With that, I want to give you the overview of the six stages of energy transformation. Now, why do you care? Let me start there. Um, by the way, start with why, <clears throat> right, gonna Simon Sinek this for a hot minute, why do we care about the six stages of energy transformation? The reason why always comes, a why always comes from our pain, right? My good friend Thomas Shipley says, what's the problem? What is the problem that we are solving right now? Um, looking at the six stages of energy transformation, the problem is this, energy blocks or energy feeling quote unquote stuck. Now, I don't believe in stuck. I sincerely believe that stuck is a mindset, right? Stuck is um, a thought that you just keep thinking and a thought can be changed, right? In the words of Abraham Hicks, if you, like, uh, what did she say? A belief is a thought you keep thinking and a thought is something that can be changed. So with this idea of stuckness, this is the problem that we're solving here. Why do we care about six stages of energy transformation? The reason why is because you may be experiencing a stuckness, right? Maybe you're feeling stuck as duck in your wealth right now where the money is just, where is it? So it's clogged up somewhere, right? Lord, I know you're sending money to my bank account. I don't know when it's coming <laughs> or where it got lost in the mail, but we're ready to receive it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is, right? So you may be feeling stuck as duck in your finances. Be kind to yourself. If that's the situation, we're going to talk about six ways that we can unstuck you, right? To unleash that block. Um, there's usually the three main areas. The second main area that you may be experiencing the stuck, right? The, the, the stuck suck could be in your health. Um, another primary area that we are experiencing the problem of feeling stuck is well, persistent weight, um, a persistent aches and pains, a strange, mysterious illnesses, and all of the cooties uh, coming on in our physical bodies, right? The being able to get the energy moving, right? Or even uh, talking constipated, right? You might be feeling uh, different kinds of congestion or constipation in your physicality. There are six stages of energy transformation. In addition to, right, eat your greens, you know, or eat your beans <laughs> to get the energy moving. There are six stages of energy transformation that we could cover to get you unstuck and having your physical energy flowing, right? Getting you more in alignment with vibrant health. And then, of course, the last but not least area where you could be experiencing the problem of stuckness is in love and relationships, right? So no love or not feeling the love in your life or it's been forever since you've made a new friend, right? And being able to enjoy friendship or it's been forever since you've been able to enjoy um, a friend of the opposite sex or something like that or met new people and, and feeling more love and relationship harmony in your life. Again, the problem is stuck and we have six stages of energy's transformation to unleash the block. This is what um, I want to gift you today in today's podcast episode because you know what? We are all journeypreneurs. We are all on this journey of being an entrepreneur. And the problem that overall this podcast solves is that, um, you know, what breaks my heart is that I see so many incredible, amazing, loving, talented, wise, um, spiritual, giving, safe, amazing people 
um, want to help, right? And so they'll start a business and you start on the entrepreneurial journey. Do, do, do. We're walking down the path and the curveball happens, right? Or the ground will be pulled out from underneath you. Um, and it breaks my heart that amazing lights like you will drop off the journey. They'll just stop the journey. No, 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 no. This podcast is dedicated to keeping you on your path, not just trudging along, but specifically to rapid financial ascension and massive impact as the conscious entrepreneur that you are. You are here to help and heal the world and whatever tools or techniques or stories or friends of mine that I can connect you with to keep you on that journey vibrantly um, and sharing your special gifts and transformation that we need so badly in the world. I'm going to do it. And this podcast is for you. Mwah! With that being said, now that you have the why, we're super clear on what's the problem. The problem is we're stuck, right? Feeling stuck. The energy is feeling stuck somewhere, wealth, health, or love. Um, and so the solution I want to introduce you to, um, that could inspire you, maybe turn on a little bit more flow is the six stages of energy transformation that I've observed over the last 10 years of being a professional energy healer. I hope this serves with that being said, the first stage is something I call grounding. Now, I, I, I'm not going to coin this term. Grounding is not something that I made up. This is something that I've observed as well as I have learned uh, personally along my journey as a, a healer who happens to own a business, right? So I'm a conscious entrepreneur. Grounding is the first stage of energy transformation. And what does grounding mean? That means connecting to sensuality. And when I say sensuality, sure, that may excite you on a physical sense, and that's perfectly fine. But where is it exciting you? It's exciting you physically. So this has to do with physicality is grounding. Sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, physicality. Sight, sound, taste, touch, smell is sensuality. And when we are grounding, that means getting back into the body, warming up caring for and becoming aware of your sacred temple, your body, the first stage of energy transformation in wealth, health, or love. I don't care where your block is. doesn't matter, right? It's always mindset. Your block is always mindset. There's no such thing as being blocked. Every block you ever had, you own and you actually control be kind to yourself um, if this may be the first time that you're hearing that. But the first stage to energy transformation is sensuality, getting into the body and grounding. Now, what does grounding really look like? Grounding looks like connecting to your zero. And I mean that in an electrical engineering sense. So the word grounding is borrowed from electrical engineering. Um, if you've ever plugged something into the wall, uh, like maybe when you plug in your cell phone, you see that there are usually three holes to plug your, um, your, your power cord into. So there's the two kind of vertical or straight ones and one, well, in the U S is circular. And that third one is called the ground in electrical engineering. Now in older homes, um, that are ungrounded, right? Because we didn't really adopt, um, this yet in technology standards of um construction right uh and electrical wiring for houses there will only be the two vertical and that's positive negative right that's the minimum that you need in order to have an electric current so most smaller machines such as phones laptops you know smaller lamps um most smaller devices and machines tend to only use uh those two vertical, positive and negative, in order to connect to the current. But in the history of uh, electrical engineering for buildings, they found that when lightning would strike, 
right? When there was a significant power surge, read like a curveball, things that were unexpected. When lightning strikes the system, the machines or devices or lamps that were connected to only a positive negative energy current would pop, right? Or they would short circuit. They would get overloaded by the sudden change, the sudden change in energy would short circuit the device. Have you ever had a sudden change come across your life that short circuited your ability to perceive which way is up? Have you ever had a sudden change come in your life that um, right and wrong were blurred? <laughs> and what's the reaction? Shut down, right? Be kind to yourself. If you are in shutdown mode, this is a physical phenomenon. We can look to electrical engineering for patterns of how to move through that because once this was discovered, building codes change, right? Electrical uh electrical standards changed where we had to always have a ground so that life became less dangerous. The building became less dangerous to stay in because lightning strikes, who knows when, who knows where, but lightning will strike because life, <laughs> right? We live on planet earth where lightning exists. And once they started installing a ground, what happens is that this is a third paradigm. Instead of just par positive, negative, um, it's now neutral. And why do they call it a ground? Because literally it weaves through, it's like a wire that weaves through the house and connects either to the box or literally a stick in the ground. Like this connects you to the largest neutral, the largest grounding source, um, in all of creation. That is mother earth herself. This is the dirt literally. So why does lightning strike usually down rather than sideways or up overall? Because lightning is searching for the ground. She's coming down to the earth to release all of this excess static build, right? All of that positive negative charge finds its way eventually to the ground to be equalized. And the same thing we can do then in buildings to make them safer is having a ground. So that's why larger devices, um, or if you have, um, what is this called? The thing where you like plug multiple uh, devices into, usually, whatever that thing is called, the word is escaping me, but you know what I'm talking about. It's usually an extension cord or uh, what is it, a power bank, whatever it is. That also has three prongs as well, so that... Anything you plug into that strip, power strip, go, go, gadget brain. So anything you plug into the power strip is also by extension grounded, even if it only has two prongs to it, right? This makes it safer so that even if there is a sudden power surge, right, or a sudden unexpected surge of energy, when something unexpected happens, we're not just talking about electrical engineering here. Are you following me? Right? Right. No matter what, the excess energy is released, right? And you can keep using the device. Even if lightning is striking it, for a larger devices as well, they always have to be grounded because they pull more energy, like a fridge or a washing machine or a jackhammer or what, something that pulls a lot more amps, needs a lot more energy to make the transformation in the world that it was created to has got to be grounded. And this, here's where I want to bring it back to you. The first stage in energy transformation for any block, getting it unstuck is connecting to your sensuality, sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, but also grounding. And this is connecting to neutral, right? Observing our own spiritual engineering, right? We are electromagnetic beings. Um, if you've ever been hooked up to an EEG, you had a spiritual revelation that, oh my gosh, I'm an electromagnetic being, <laughs> right? You have electrical impulses and your body shifts when it is able to connect back to neutral. Now, what puts you at neutral? Being out in nature and also being connected to sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, reviving your sensuality. We give you ex an exercise to do that in particular in the Entrepreneur Master Manifestor Challenge on day one, um, as well as in the wor workbook, workbook, go, go, gadget mouth as well. So if you wanted to know how to do that and the 
also my book, Natural Intuition Now, there's an entire chapter on grounding. It's the largest chapter in that. It's like a little book, but it's all tactical. That's why the book is small. Um, the largest chapter in my book is dedicated to grounding because nobody remembers to do this. But everyone loves to go around talking about how stuck they are, which moves us on to the next stage of uh, the six stages of energy transformation is storytelling. So here's the thing. All right. Now that we've grounded and cleared our bodies, we've connected to neutral and we discharged all that excess, unexpected, you know, curveball energy uh, that we may be holding on the physical realm. What happens next? Where do we go next is storytelling. And what storytelling is, is the power of words and the stories that you tell yourself about yourself. This is the mindset stage of energy transformation. There's always a story and many uh, people who are in the coaching industry understand the power of story of how if you just change your story, you'll change your life, right? Tony Robbins teaches that. Change your story, change your life. Now the power of storytelling um, is that words have energy. Every word that you say has energy. I believe it was a Henry Ford that says whether you say you can or you can't, you're, you're right. I, I think that might have been Henry Ford. Um, send me an email back, team at victoriawhitfield.com, if you know uh, whether or not that was correct. I would love to be supported by you. Uh, but storytelling, words have power. And in the second stage of energy transformation, we have to analyze what are the words that you are using to describe your current reality. Because if you are canting all over yourself, and uh, well, even worse than canting is shooting all over yourself, I shoulda, woulda, coulda, I shoulda, I shoulda, I shoulda, beating yourself up um, in order to feel significant and focused. Yeah, I said that with love. I'm saying that because I've done that too. I know, I know, I'm right there with you. I'm your journey partner. I am not your journey leader, right? We all have given ourselves like a good smack over the head in order to focus. Um, but with love, there are other ways to be motivated and there are other ways to move the energy along without beating ourselves up in order to make it through, right? So the power of storytelling, because with storytelling, the words that you're using could be fueling the stuck, such as describing yourself as I'm stuck. <laughs> That's a, that is a great recipe for reinforcing the stuck as duckness that you're experiencing right now in wealth, health, or love. Um, if you were to look at the words that you are describing, I'm telling you this is so powerful. The words that you are using to describe yourself as well as Let's say the economy around you, or, oh, the economy's going down. Oh, the economy. It's, it's, you know, we're, you know, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your toilet paper. The economy is going down. Um, those are words that are a recipe for lack versus if you're using words that reflect abundance, that'll attract more abundance to you. Mantra work is very powerful for activating abundant words, right? Um, guided visualization meditations, right? And um, positive hypnosis, abundance hypnosis are really powerful for giving you words um, that tell a better, a better story for you. Positive reading, right? Reading books, that feed your faith with chock full of stories of overcoming, chock full of stories of joy and pleasure and laughter and wealth and believing that things are getting better and empowerment. Reading books that empower you is so much better for your internal storytelling than reading crazy, crazy, scary, um, dramatic horrifying, gory, or um, how do you say, anxiety-inducing news reports or Netflix series or all of the, like, the stuff that you can consume, go on an information diet, right? Start, yeah, create a food journal, but not of food, but of all of the things that you are reading and check out the stories that you are hypnotizing yourself with, right? 
If you're sitting there watching Game of Thrones and having this mantra about, oh, winter is coming. I only watch like maybe one or two episodes because I can't take all the gore and the crazy uh, of that show. But if you are hypnotizing yourself and saying winter is coming, winter is coming, guess what? You are manifesting. <laughs> you are manifesting trouble on the horizon with love. I want to I got to break this to you so that you can have your breakthrough. Stop. <laughs> Just stop. You know, winter isn't the only season that's coming, baby. So is summer. So is springtime, right? And if you just keep preparing for winter, what you going to do when the sun comes out and the tidal waves of abundance come your way? Well, yeah, I'll tell you what you'll do because of the story, the words that you are using of, oh, winter's coming, right? And all this scary self Um, terrorizing, right? This self-terrorism that we do to ourselves in the crappy, crusty stories um, we're hypnotized to tell ourselves. Once summer and the the tidal wave of abundance comes, you will self-sabotage. I'm telling you that because I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the tattoo and the partially removed tattoo to show you. I would love to be able to show you that. Maybe one day while we're on the beach, you'll be able to see it. (laughs) Um, With that being said, storytelling is the second stage of energy transformation. But there's more, right? That's number two out of six. Number three. Oh, I love number three. The third stage of energy transformation is turn on, right? Oh, yeah, baby. No, so this is not just arousal, but yes, it is arousal. Um, I'm using a term that I got from one of my mentors, Mama Gina, uh, for this stage. But if you're an Abraham Hicks follower, Abraham, she calls this the vortex. If you are a Tony Robbins follower, Tony Robbins or uh, Brendan Bruchard follower, they call this peak state. Right. But all of the above is turn on. It's turn on. This is state mastery. Uh, The third stage of energy transformation has to do with being able to manage your state to be able to turn yourself on. Even when everybody else is turned off, everybody else, everything else is really crappy, crusty, awful, flat, um, numbed dumbed down, drank the wrong Kool-Aid, and it ended up being poison. And so everyone and everything around you is poisoned with low vibrational mindset, lack mindset, fear mindset. You have got to be able to turn yourself on, right? Encourage yourself, right? uh, uh, In the church, they talk about praying for yourself, right? Preach to yourself. If you are called to be a minister, preach yourself. Don't wait for you to have a a, a congregation. Preach to yourself. If you're a speaker, you got to be able to speak to yourself, motivate yourself. And don't nobody want to come and watch a motivational speaker that is unmotivated? Ew. <laughs> right? Turn yourself on. And this is especially powerful. I'm not just talking about sex. Yes, it's included. But if you are only associating turn on with sex, then honey, you have a boring life. Oh my goddess. I'm sending you so much love. Brothers, sisters, if you only get turned on by sex, you have an incredibly boring and unbalanced life. There's so much more fabulousness out there. There's so many more things to turn you on, get you into peak state, turn on your vortex out there other than, you know. Uh, And this also is the source of confidence, right? Where you will have juice and energy and belief in yourself to get out there and go do something. Now, here's the thing. What's the problem that you're experiencing? Being stuck? So let's pick one of the stucks. Uh, How about wealth? Where you got a wealth stuck and it sucks really bad. Absolutely being stuck financially. But here's the thing. If you cannot turn yourself on about making money and making sales, if sales disgusts you or turns you off, rather than turns you on, you're going to have a world of hurt trying to manifest money. Um, But I cannot tell you how many conscious entrepreneurs are unconscious of the fact they're walking around like, sales is disgusting. That's slimy. I'm spiritual. I'm not going to do that. Or people aren't going to buy my thing because I'm a nice person. And all that storytelling 
that reinforces a really turned off connection to sales and marketing or going out and, and making money, receiving money, right? Oh, I'm a go giver, right? It's not about, it's not about the money. It's about helping people. Well, you know, if you need money, you had better make it about the money and find a way to turn yourself on about it, right? Get into the vortex, get into a peak state, adjust your state so that it feels good selling, that it feels good receiving money and not just handouts, but money that you asked for clearly and that you gave incredible value in exchange for it. One of my favorite books um, by Florence Scovel Shin, she says, I have a wonderful business in a wonderful way. I give wonderful service for wonderful pay. And so it is. Yeah. And so that wonderful uh, chant, storytelling, is actually a way to turn on good feelings that, oh, getting paid is wonderful, right? And that's a feeling in your body. Turn on is a feeling in your body that hacks your emotions and hacks your behaviors, gives you the emotional lubricant to get unstuck, right? Moving through, that's, that was only number three, right? So that's the first three stages of energy transformation. There's another three that I want to teach you. And oh my, my spirit guides are telling me, but not today. <laughs> right? So the next time I'm going to teach you about this is in a later episode. I'll be back uh, after I do a few interviews sharing my friends with you. Um, but uh, so this is episode 121. I'm going to teach you the next three stages of energy transformation in episode 125. So you stay tuned for that. But I'm curious, how are you feeling hearing the first three stages? Because you know what? The first three are already sufficient to get your energy moving, right? Wealth, health, or love, wherever you're experiencing the stuck, right? Wherever <clears throat> you're creating the stuck, the first three stages of energy transformation are enough to get you moving. And I've seen it. You know, I've led the Entrepreneur Master Manifestor Challenge, um, which is a five-day challenge where I teach all of this in, in five days. Uh, this is the 11th time right at the recording of this podcast episode. And over the years, seeing hundreds of entrepreneurs come through this challenge, the first, like literally the first stage of grounding, once they learn, they forget the, the rest of the six. If you actually do something to ground today intentionally, right? And this is where we'll leave off. If you ground with the intention of, I am moving out of this stuck, right? I am no longer creating my stuck. I'm going to ground it out and release just like a lightning bolt coming into my house. The excess charge is going to go right through me and into the ground. Bye-bye, right? Releasing that. If you ground today intentionally around your, like releasing your stuckness, whatever it is, wealth, health, love, you will see movement. It's incredible. I've seen it every single time, every single time, right? And if you want more support around being able to go through all six stages um, and also to do it with a whole bunch of awesome people who are practicing the same thing as you, come on over to Facebook, the Entrepreneur Master Manifestors Facebook group, uh, where we do five-day Entrepreneur Master Manifestor challenges so that you can get into this practice, right? So with that being said, if this is your first episode, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the Journeypreneur podcast. Um, if this is your first episode, go ahead on iTunes, hit that subscribe button so that you get the notifications first every single time a new one is uploaded. And while you're there, leave us a five-star review because I want to hear from you. That's the only place on iTunes where you can really share what your main takeaways are. This is episode 121, and I want to hear it. Episode 121, put it in the comments under your five-star review and tell me what was the one thing that 
blessed you the most, that inspired you to dust yourself off and get back on your journey as a conscious entrepreneur. I am here to support you and I love hearing your stories of aha moments and transformation. And thank you to so many. Oh my gosh, I love going through and reading everyone's comments. It's amazing uh, to see what's blessed you and to feel all of that love and celebration. Thank you. Mwah, hugs and kisses all around. Right, so that's it for today's podcast episode, and I'm going to end it the same way that I do every single time. Remember, please enjoy the journey. Do not lose your glow as you grow in life and business, and I'll see you in the next podcast episode. Bye for now.